Hey everybody, Billy Rabbit here with a tale that comes to me today from Old McDonald's Farm. Yeah, out there on the farm, Mittens the Cat told me this story. <laughs> it's funny, it's pretty funny. And um, it involves a hen, it's called the Little Red Hen, and here is how it goes. Yeah. You remember Old McDonald's Farm? Yeah. I may have mentioned it a few times, it's pretty cool. And anyway, on his farm he had a chicken. And that chicken was the little red hen. And she had some baby chicks and everything. And you know how chickens are. They have chicks and uh, live in the barnyard and uh, in a chicken coop and stuff like that. And one day, one day, she got really tired of eating chicken feed and scratching for worms. And, uh, you know, chicken feed and little things you find when you're scratching around the barnyard are great if you're a chicken. But even chickens need a break every now and then, you know. And so she's thinking, bread. Yeah, that's what I need is some nice bread. And on the farm, they had a lot of things, but they did not have a bread maker. And she was going to have to make this one from scratch. Because <laughs> she's a chicken and it's scratching and making things from scratch. That's pretty funny, you know. Anyway... So she has to start with some seeds and one of the lesser used fields, a small patch behind the barn. And being kind of small, she could use some help with this, you know. And she says, who will help me plant the wheat? And the cow's like, not me. And the cat's saying like, no. And the sheep is all like, I don't think so. And so the little red hen uh, plants all the wheat by herself. Yeah, about 2,000 square feet of wheat, just enough for one loaf of bread. And when she was done, she waited and waited and waited kind of a long time. And then she more, she, you know, she waited about eight months for that wheat to grow. That's a long time for a chicken. And pretty much everyone had forgotten about the wheat incident. And uh, they hardly even noticed that little patch of wheat behind the barn. And then suddenly it's harvest time. And harvesting wheat is a big job, especially for one small chicken. So she asked around the barnyard. And the cow's just sort of looking at her. And the pigs remembered that they had houses to build. And the rooster comes up to the hen and says, um, Look, little red hen, me and the other barnyard animals were a little concerned about this whole bread thing. Now you're a chicken. You aren't built for farming or anything like that. Now we thought after you'd planted that wheat... You'd sort of forget the whole thing. What with you having a brain the size of a thimble and everything, as we chickens do. But we just can't get behind you on this whole harvesting thing, right? And he turns to the other animals, and they're all kind of nodding. But the dog, the dog breaks ranks. He says, yeah, sure, I'll help. The little red hen says, well, if none of you want to help, I'll have to harvest this grain myself. And the dog's like, hey, am I invisible now? I'm right here, ready to help. I'm heading out there to the field to harvest the grain right now. I'm with you. I'm going. And the next thing you know, the dog is like running for his life. The little red hen is suddenly driving the largest combine harvester you've ever seen that she uh, pulled out of the barn. And she's got the seatbelt on and she can't quite see over the dashboard. So she's kind of guessing at where she's going. And you know, her little feet don't reach the pedals. So she's got like blocks on there, right? So she can't really control the whole thing. She got the wheat, got the wheat. That was pretty easy because you know, that thing is made for thousands of acres. And this is 0 0.05 acres in case anybody's keeping track. And she had that done in about a half a second and was heading straight for the dog. And he's like, out of there. In addition to just missing the dog, she harvested about half a fence and the mailbox before she managed to shut it off. I think it just ran out of gas. And the rooster just looks at her and he's like, I don't even know you, little red hen. But the little red hen gets grain into a little sack, you know, and says, who will help me grind the wheat? And everybody looks at her and then just sort of backs away slowly, not making eye contact. And the sheep's like, hey, yeah, not me. And the cow's like, I'm out. And the cat is chasing a mouse across the yard. And they both stop. And they look at each other. And they look at the hen. And they shake their heads. And they're like, no way are we getting involved in this. And then they take off again. So the little red hen says, I should have to grind the wheat myself. And the horse is like, um, how are you going to grind that grain? 
and Little Red Hen is pushing a sack of grain on a convenient little cart to the big mill on the other side of the farm. You know, the one they use for grinding all the grain. And the horse is like, oh no. And Little Red Hen has a grain loaded into a ginormous hopper and finds a switch to turn the mill on. And the mill in itself is the size of a supermarket. And it's complicated, you know, with all kinds of controls. And the Little Red Hen does not have a clue as to how to operate any of this. But she guesses a lot, you know, and she finds a start button, and pretty soon the thing is revving up, and there's all this noise, and it's in full grinding mode, and then in about a half a second, her grain is ground into a fine misty powder and shot into a little bag at the other end. And Little Red Hen takes the bag and leaves, but the machine's still on. And pretty soon, old McDonald is out there running for the mill going like, Oh, what's happened to my mill? And uh, the thing's like running on high there. And he's like, hey, it's going to explode. Who did this? And all the animals are like ducking for cover. But the little red hen is totally oblivious. She's gotten into the house with the little sack of flour. And she's in the kitchen. And she's got a cookbook and a rolling pin. And some stuff out of the cupboard that looks like it might go in bread. And she's even got a YouTube video going on how to make bread. And she looks out the window and says, Who will help me knead the dough? And by this time, all the barnyard animals are just staring at her in horror. They're all like wide-eyed with their mouths open and they can't quite think of the right form of don't do that to use on her, you know, because they're all like thinking, oh, this is not going to end well. And, you know, she's kneading the dough herself with her wings and that's kind of messy. And when she's done with that, she's letting it rise, right? And she goes back out the window to go get the other animals to help her bake the bread. And she really had figured out that they just weren't into cooking. Anyway, old MacDonald comes in after having shut down the mill with only minimal damage to the place. And he sees all these feathers in the kitchen and flour everywhere. And he's wondering what's going on. And he's thinking like maybe it's aliens or burglars or something. Either way, he's going to get a big rake that he keeps around for whacking dangerous invaders. Because, you know, that's a farmer thing to do. And meanwhile, the little red hen is in the barnyard asking about who will help her bake the bread. And the horse says, like, not me. And the ducks say, not us. And the giraffe says, not me. And the goat says, me neither. And the chicken thinks for a second and says, hey, wait a minute, giraffe? And the giraffe says, yeah, I'm with the circus. Is this the Enchanted Forest Convention Center? And everybody points the other way. And he's like, isn't this 1760 South Newberry? And they're all like, no, this is 1760 North Newberry. The convention center is South Newberry. And the giraffe like takes off. Meanwhile, the red hen is baking the bread herself. And you know, there's kind of a fire and some damage to the kitchen. And when old McDonald shows up with his rake, he's trying to hit the chicken who's completely covered in flour by this point. And he's totally convinced he's dealing with a poultry geist. <laughs> yeah, poultry geist. He's dealing with a poultry geist. You know, I stayed up all night writing that joke. And yeah, I, di- I did say that. You can, you can quote me on that. And Little Red Hen, like, gets out the window with the bread and hot foots it back to the barnyard and says, Who will help me eat the bread, right? And she's all like, yeah, I'm going to show them who's boss for not helping. But it kind of doesn't work out that way. Because, like, she shows him the bread, and it's his, like, little loaf of slightly burned lumpy bread with chicken feathers sticking out of it. Yee. And they all tell her that they really aren't hungry, and that they don't eat bread, you know. And the cow claims he's on a gluten-free diet. And then the dog shows up, and he takes one look at it and hurls. And, like, the cat is trying to take it out and bury it. And he's, like, scraping some dirt over it, you know. And Little Red Hen says, oh yeah, since none of you helped me plant the bread or harvest the grain or mill the flour, pretty much get do anything involved with the creation of this loaf of bread, then you shall have none of it. And they all breathed a sigh of relief. And Little Red Hen went to eat the bread because like her chicks had all grown up and they had left. They were like on to other things. And she decides she's going to eat this bread herself. And then... She realizes that, you know, with bread, you got to have peanut butter. And she doesn't have any peanut butter. So she holds up a little peanut and says, Who will help me plant the peanuts? 
and all the animals like make themselves scarce, and the little red hen never baked anything or actually tried to cook again, because, you know, there was a, um, a legal restraining order involved, you know, and they all lived happily ever after. Uh, well, they lived happily ever after, after Old MacDonald got the kitchen fire under control. But after that, happily. Yeah, so that's my story. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Yeah. Love that story. It's great stuff. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Billy Rabbit here reminding you to watch my show um, on Kaleidoscope Kids TV Network called The Crazy World of Billy Rabbit. And, um, yeah, it's cool. And also like us on Facebook. Got a Facebook now, yeah. Um, cause, <laughs> yeah, uh, Hansel of Hansel and Gretel fame has agreed to, uh, remodel the witch's house, uh, if we get a thousand likes. Yeah. And he's a pastry chef, so you know that's gonna work out, cause she's got the gingerbread house. Um, yeah, so thanks very much, and, uh, watch us, uh, Kaleidoscope Kids, Billy Rabbit, that's me, and Facebook. Hey everybody, Billy Rabbit here with another amazing tale from the Enchanted Forest. And this uh, story was actually told to me by one of the park rangers at the Enchanted Forest campground. Where I just got back, I spent the weekend there with the family, you know. It, um, it's kind of cool. Back to nature and everything, which is in itself kind of odd because we are rabbits and we are kind of back to nature to begin with. So it's kind of like staying at a hotel. A theme hotel. A forest theme hotel. It was it was great though. So we had a great time. But he told me this story and this is how it goes. Once upon a time, that's the way these things usually start, you know, there were these two kids named Hansel and Gretel. And they were just a little paranoid and somewhat delusional and sort of thought their parents had abandoned them in the woods. When in fact their parents were at a campground, sort of wondering where those two kids had gotten off to, seeing as how they were all on vacation. And to keep from getting too lost, they decided to leave a trail of candy bars to mark their way back to the campground. But Hansel really liked candy bars, so they kind of uh, decided not to do that. And uh, ended up uh, deciding that it would be much better if they used, in fact, a loaf of bread. And they would break it into little pieces and leave a trail of breadcrumbs and therefore be able to find their way back, which is a really good idea on the surface. Then, after a few hours of aimless, yet relaxing walking, they decided it was time to go back. But lo and behold, the breadcrumb trail was not there. This was primarily because they had actually only talked about leaving a breadcrumb trail and never actually followed through on leaving the breadcrumbs. And pretty soon they were somewhat alarmed, you know, as one would be. Being lost in a large forest is particularly alarming. Uh, you know, I once got lost in the toy department at Walmart uh, but I did find my mom again, did find her. Uh, she was in the pet food aisle buying groceries. Yeah. Anyway, they were lost in the forest. And uh, they uh, eventually happened to cross a house made entirely of gingerbread and various candies. And Gretel is like saying, hey, there's something you don't see every day. I wonder if they got like Oompa Loompas around here. And Hansel's all like, yeah, I could go for a beef and cheese Oompa Loompa right now. And I kind of think he was thinking of something else. But before they could go too far along that line of thought, who should show up but the little old lady who owned the house? Who was, in fact, a witch. Uh, not your television kind of witch who is usually friendly and gets into trouble using her magic. No. This was a gingerbread house building witch. Very rare and strange indeed. And she's all like, hey, 
who's been eating my large gingerbread house with the candy trim? And uh, Hansel and Gretel, <laughs> they're a little confused by this. And they're like looking at each other. And they're, they're wondering too, like, uh, I don't see anybody eating it, you know. And they're thinking, um, I don't know, maybe we should help her out. We could, maybe there are honey badgers or wolves or ants or perhaps hungry raccoons. You know, all of them might be interested in uh, nibbling on a large house. And since it is a multi-story, it's at least, you know, like 1,300 square feet with uh, two baths, three bedroom, and a garage. You know, they're thinking like, uh, they'd have to eat a lot of this house before she would really notice. You know, it's it's a big place. And they ask her about this, like, uh, how would you know if somebody was actually eating your gingerbread house? It's enormous! And she's like, oh yeah, I'm a witch. I know. I know. I put a fresh coat of frosting on this house just the other day. And they're all like, yeah, frosting on the house. Wouldn't you get like ants or something? I mean, you're living in a forest. You know, it rains here occasionally. What do you do? The place is going to turn to mush. And the witch is like, yeah, don't worry about that. That's not your problem. You have a bigger problem. And they're like, what bigger problem could we have? And the witch is like, you know, being trapped in a cage in my kitchen and waiting for me to cook you and eat you both. And they're like laughing. They're like, yeah, we're not going to do that. And the next thing you know, they're actually in the kitchen in a large cage waiting to be cooked and eaten. And they're like, how'd you do that? And the witch is like, yeah, it's like, remember on that old show F Troop where Agarn would say, I'm not wearing the dress. I'm not wearing that dress. And the next thing you know, he'd be wearing that dress. It was just like that. This was really confusing because they knew nothing about what she was talking about. And in the meantime, the witch, you know, she's getting ready. She's got like a big cookbook going on her candy table. The witch is uh, like thinking about how she's going to cook them. You know, uh, Hansel uh, steps up and he says, you know, like, if you're a witch, why wouldn't you just eat like a sandwich? And she's like, that's ridiculous. That's cannibalism. Yeah. And then Gretel's like, why would you want to go to all that trouble to eat us? Because basically you live in a large pastry based home. You could eat some of that. I mean, there is a spare bedroom here. I'm sure of it. You could probably eat that and you'd be set for weeks. And she's like, no, they're trying to talk their way out of this. And they're pretty seriously working on it. He says, I've got an idea. And he holds up a candy bar. He says, instead of us, why don't you uh, go with your candy-based theme and eat this? And it's a baby Ruth. And she's like, yeah, no, no, it's you two. By this time, they're getting a little desperate. And they're hoping they're going to be rescued by the three musketeers. And then suddenly, Hansel uh, starts thinking about this. And he's thinking... Hey, wait a minute. These bars, the whole place is made of candy. And he's like, yeah, these bars are made of candy. And then, you know, Gretel is like, yeah, they're made of candy. We could get the ants to eat through the bars. That might take uh, four or five months. And he's like, no, no, listen, I'm a candy eating expert. And in a matter of minutes, he has eaten through the candy bars. Yeah, candy bars. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. He's eaten through the candy bars. And the witch turns around just in time to see him. And he's out. He's free. He's a pretty strong little guy. And he shoves her straight into that box of Red Hots. And she's like, ah, I'm not burning or anything. And they're all like looking at each other. And it's like kind of a silly, awkward moment for them all. And she realizes, you know, like, yeah, I feel kind of dumb right now. I have a plan. I'm going to chase you guys around the room, put you back in the cage, and then cook you and eat you. And Hansel and Gretel, they have a different plan in mind. They're like, through that door. They're like, boom, out of there. They've escaped from the witch, but they still have one little problem lost in the forest. Then Hansel figures it out. He's like, wait a minute. That house was a giant pastry house made of giant gingerbread. If there's a giant gingerbread house, then somewhere near here, and they start smelling around, and they smell it. Bacon gingerbread. And they follow the smell to a giant gingerbread bakery. Because that's where you're going to get your giant gingerbread. And the guys at the bakery, yeah, they know the witch. They sold her all these giant pieces of gingerbread. 
And pretty soon they got, you know, they got the kids back, got some park rangers out there, and the health department who surrounded the witch's house, you know. She was in trouble with that and uh, was taken into custody quickly. Yeah. And uh, the park rangers told him, said, yeah, you kids are really lucky. If you'd gone the other way, you would have ended up at the house of the Brussels sprout witch. Yeah. They're like, yeah, we're not eating that house. And then they get back to the campground, right? And their parents are like, oh, we're so glad to see you. Did you guys have fun out there? They're like, yeah, we you have fun. Yeah, little of this, little of that, you know, it was a mixed bag. And their parents are like, hey, we're going to go to the house of pancakes. And that was it. The kids were like in the car, figuring out how to drive that thing home. They were not going to another weird house. Hansel and Gretel, you know, they got back to their parents. They lived happily ever after. And the witch, yeah, she ended up in a madhouse. Yeah, because she was just like cuckoo. And that was her deal, you know. She was like nuts. And uh, she was out of commission, though, know? you know. Wasn't bothering kids in houses and stuff anymore. And that's my story. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Bye. Hansel and Gretel, yeah. She's pretty good, huh? I want some gingerbread.